The cardiovascular system is sometimes called the blood vascular or simply the circulatory system. It consists of the heart, which is a muscular pumping device, and a closed system of vessels called arteries, veins and capillaries. As the name implies, blood contained in the circulatory system is pumped by the heart around a closed circle or circuit of vessels as it passes again and again through various circulations of the body. The vital role of the cardiovascular system is maintaining homeostasis, depending on the continuous and controlled movement of blood through the thousands of miles of capillaries that permeate every tissue and reach every cell in the body. It is the microscopic capillaries that blood performs its ultimate transport function. Nutrients and other essential materials pass from capillary blood into fluids surrounding the cells as waste products are removed. My name is Selena and in this lesson you will learn the structure, the function and disorders of the cardiovascular system. Blood is a liquid connected tissue which is made up of a specialised cell suspended in plasma. Blood fluid that transports oxygen and nutrients to the cells and carries away carbon dioxide and other waste products. Technically, blood is a transport liquid pumped by the heart to all parts of the body, after which it is returned to the heart to repeat the process. Blood is both a tissue and a fluid. It is a tissue because it is a collection of similar specialised cells that serve particular functions. These cells are suspended in a liquid matrix, plasma, which makes the blood a fluid. Adult bodies contain approximately 4 to 5 litres of blood, newborns 300 ml. Specialised cells is 45% of blood volume and plasma 55% of blood volume. Blood plasma is a liquid component of blood that holds the blood cells, proteins and other constituents of whole blood in suspension. The colour of the plasma is usually pale yellowish, straw-like, but may differ depending on the psychological state of the body. As mentioned earlier, it makes up about 55% of the body's total blood volume. It is the intervascular part of extracellular fluid all body fluid outside cells. Plasma carries water, salts and enzymes. The main role of plasma is to take nutrients, hormones and proteins to the parts of the body that need it. Cells also put their waste products into the plasma. The plasma then helps remove this waste from the body. Blood plasma also carries all parts of the blood to your circulatory system. The difference between blood and plasma is that blood is the main bodily fluid that helps in the transportation of nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide and waste products to carry out waste products. Plasma is the liquid component of the blood excluding blood cells. Blood contains the cells red and white and platelets. Plasma does not contain any cells. Minerals and salts help nerve conduction and ensure that tissue cells keep the right acid balance. Nutrients used by cells for energy, repair and cell reproduction. Removal of waste products, urea, ureic acid and CO2. Enzymes produce or speed up chemical changes in other substances. Antibodies and antitoxins protect the body respond to the presence of toxins released by viruses and bacteria. And gases, your oxygen and your CO2. Erythrocytes contain the pigment hemoglobin, which imparts the red colour to blood. The main role of red blood cells, also known as RBCs, is to transport of gases, O2 and CO2, from the lungs to the tissue and to maintain systemic acid. In addition, red blood cells are well equipped with antitoxin systems, which essentially contribute to their function. They're produced in bone marrow. Lifespan is about 120 days and broken down in the spleen and then the liver. 
White blood cells, also known as leukocytes, are immune cells that circulate in the blood and lymphatic system. The main function is immunological response. Increased rapidly by mitosis in case of infection. Granulocytes defend organisms against invading organisms, attracted by toxins in the tissues, can pass through capillary walls. Non-granulocytes, lymphocytes, T cells and B cells, produce antibodies. Monocytes eat bacteria and other microorganisms. Platelets, also called thrombocytes, are small fragile cells with no nucleus and are a compound of blood whose function, along with coagulation factors, is to react to bleeding from blood vessel injury by clumping, thereby initiating a blood clot. The heart is the central organ engine of the circulatory system. It's made up of cardiac muscle. It is the size of your clenched fist. It lies in front and middle of your chest, behind and slightly to the left of your breastbone. It is a muscle that pumps blood to all parts of your body to provide it with oxygen and nutrients it needs to function. Heart is the pump that drives the circulatory system contracts rhythmically, forcing the blood through a system of vessels. It is controlled by the nervous system. Heartbeat is a cardiac cycle, the pattern of muscular contraction of the heart wall. The pulse rate is exactly equal to the heartbeat, as the contractions of the heart causes and increases in blood pressure in the arteries that lead to a noticeable pulse. Taking the pulse is therefore a direct measure of heart rate. Arteries are a type of blood vessel. They work to carry blood away from the heart. In contrast, veins carry blood back to the heart. Because arteries are moving blood being pumped out by the heart, the walls of the arteries are thicker and more elastic than those of veins. This is because the blood in the arteries is passing through with a higher pressure than in veins. The thick elastic walls of arteries accommodate that pressure. They have the ability to contract and relax, contract according to the rate of the heart, the passes the lumen is small and transports oxygenated blood from the heart to body organs. Arterioles are small blood vessels that are smaller than arteries but larger than capillaries. They can be found all over the body. Since they connect arteries and capillaries, they have an influence on blood pressure and the speed at which blood flows through the vessels. Arteries transport blood away from the heart and branch into smaller vessels from arterioles. Arterioles distribute blood to capillary beds the sites of exchange with the body's tissue, normally slightly contraction to maintain blood pressure. Regular levels of oxygen and nutrients delivered to organs. They dilate when more nutrients or oxygen is required, example muscles during exercise. Exchange of gases, nutrients and waste between blood and tissue occurs in the capillaries. The smallest blood vessels only one cell thick with porous walls. Capillaries are tiny vessels that branch out from arterioles to form networks around the body cells. In the lungs, capillaries absorb oxygen from inhaled air into bloodstream and release carbon dioxide for exhalation. The main task is to mediate the exchange of fluid and various components between the blood flowing through capillaries and the surrounding tissues. A venule is a small blood vessel in the microcirculation that allows deoxygenated blood to return from capillary beds to larger blood vessels called veins. They have thin walls with large lumen and they easily collapse under pressure. In comparison to arteries, venules and veins withstand a much lower pressure from the blood that flows through them. Their walls are considerably thinner and their lumens are much larger in diameter, 
allow more blood to flow with less vessel resistance. The action of the muscular muscles pushes blood through the veins. Valves in the internal parts of the walls prevent a backflow of blood and carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart, but the pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood to the heart. Characteristics of arteries and veins. Veins carry blood back to the heart. They're smaller to arteries, but not as strong or as thick. Unlike arteries, veins contain valves that ensure blood flows in only one direction. Arteries don't require valves because pressure from the heart is so strong that the blood is only able to flow in one direction. Definitions of arteries. They transport blood from the heart, oxygenated blood, high concentration of nutrients. The lumen is small. Pumped by the heart and muscle tissue in the walls. They're thick, muscular and they have elastic walls. Definition of veins. They transport blood to the heart. Deoxygenated blood, high concentration of waste products. The lumen is large. Pumped by the skeletal muscles and the presence of valves. They have tin walls, they're not muscular or elastic. The carotid arteries are the major blood vessels in the neck that supply blood to the brain, neck and face. There are two carotid arteries, one on the right and one on the left. In the neck, each carotid artery branches into two divisions. The internal carotid artery supplies blood to the brain and the external carotid artery supplies blood to the face and neck. The thyroid artery runs up through your neck and throat. It is considered one of the main vessels that supply blood to the thyroid gland, which is situated in front of your neck and produces hormones that keep your body functioning. It is the principal blood supplier of the thyroid. The facial artery supplies the muscles and skin of the face. It has a crucial function in maintaining these areas and provides them with oxygen and nutrients. The facial artery is one of the eight branches of the carotid artery. It is also known as the external maxillary artery. The superficial temporal artery is a blood vessel close to the skin that can be felt in both temples, located either side of the forehead. It supplies the temporalis muscle and the scalp. The lingual artery is a branch of the external carotid artery. It is the principal artery supplying the tongue, subguinal gland and oral mucus of the floor of the mouth. The occipital artery is a posterior branch of the external carotid artery, located in the posterior portion of the neck and the occipital region of the head. It supplies blood to the back of the scalp and deep muscles in the back of the neck. The maxillary artery can be defined as one of the continuations of the external carotid artery and distributes the blood flow to the upper maxilla and lower mandible, the jawbone, and supplies deep structures of the face. The function of the external jugular vein is to drain blood from the superficial structures of the cranium and the deep portions of the scalp and face. The internal jugular vein is a perjugular vein that collects blood from the skull, brain, superficial parts of the brain and the majority of the neck. The superficial temporal vein has frontal and parietal branches, serving to drain the superficial muscles and skin of the temporal region. The middle temporal vein is located between the lateral pterygoid muscle, the upper part of the cheek, and the temporalis muscle near the temple. The maxillary vein or the interior maxillary vein is formed by the union of pterygoid veins and joins with the superficial temporal vein. The facial vein or interior facial vein is a relatively large vein in the human face. It commences at the side of the root of the nose. 
and its direct continuation of the angular vein where it also receives a small nasal branch. It drains from anterior scalp, forehead, eyelids, nose, cheeks, lips, chin, submandibular gland and thyroid gland. The facial vein along with the facial artery pierces the deep investing fascia of the neck just below the border of the mandible. It drains from the anterior scalp and forehead, eyelids, nose, cheeks, lips, chin, submandible gland and thyroid gland. Varicose veins are enlarged, swollen, twisting veins, often appear blue or dark purple. They happen when faulty valves in the veins allow blood to flow in the wrong direction or to pull. More than 23% of adults are affected, often caused by hereditary, excessive periods of sitting or standing, pregnancy and obesity. Anemia is a decrease in the total amount of red blood cells, OBCs, or hemoglobin in the blood, or a lowered ability of the blood to carry oxygen. It's also caused by excessive loss of blood, lack of iron in the diet, and the failure of bone marrow to produce the normal level of cells. When anemia comes on slowly, the symptoms are often fatigue and may include feeling tired, weakness, shortness of breath, and poor ability to exercise. Septicema is a serious bloodstream infection. It's also known as blood poisoning. Septicema occurs when a bacterial infection elsewhere in the body, such as the lungs or skin, enters the bloodstream. This is dangerous because the bacteria and their toxins can be carried to the bloodstream to your entire body. Haemophilia is usually an inherited bleeding disorder in which the blood does not clot properly. This can lead to spontaneous bleeding as well as bleeding following injuries or surgery. Blood clotting contains many proteins called clotting factors that can help to stop bleeding. Hepatitis A, B and C is an inflammation of the liver, usually as a result of viral inflammation or liver damage caused by drinking alcohol. Hepatitis A is usually spread by contaminated food. The most significant difference between Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C is that people may get Hepatitis B from contact with bodily fluids of a person who has the infection. Hepatitis C usually only spreads through blood to blood contact. Hypertension is high blood pressure and is a serious condition because it makes the heart work harder to pump blood into the body and if not controlled can result in an increased risk of heart attacks, strokes and kidney failure. Similarly, hypotension is low blood pressure. The cardiovascular system is part of the larger circulatory system which circulates fluid throughout the body. The circulatory system includes both the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. The cardiovascular system moves blood throughout the body and the lymphatic system moves lymph, which is a clear fluid that is similar to plasma in blood. Blood contains nutrients from the foods you eat and oxygen from the air you breathe. It also contains hormones and cells that fight infection. The blood also transports waste products to various places that then promptly remove the waste from the body. The part of the cardiovascular system includes a heart, which is the organ that pumps the blood and network of blood vessels. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and found it helpful. Thank you for listening.